we always wanted to do right from the start was with with our book and and, and especially with the television series was just to to for the television series merely to be a ref, an account of the trip and and nothing more not mm. to jazz it up not to you know ramp things up for for the TV audience but just to let it be an account of the journey and so all the all the moments that are in there are really just tell the story you know it really lets the television audience experience the journey with us I think we shot something like 800 hours of of tape so you just can't fit it all in and 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 uh, so there's tons of stuff that you won't that you'll never use I suppose on a daily basis you're not I'm not thinking about the trip all the time but uh, and some days I forget that we've even done it but but then you'll be doing something and suddenly a little moment will pop into your head uh, from your memory. Mm. And very often it's just a little, very often it's a, a pee stop or a fag break or something at the side of the road in Siberia or where, where nothing was happening other than we were all just in the middle of Siberia at the side of the road, you know. Lots and lots of petrol stations in America. We just grew to love petrol stations in America because we were covering such massive distances by the time we got to the States. And you know, 600 miles a day, and in a, in a 600 mile day, you maybe stop four or five times in four or five different petrol stations, and you kind of grow to love them, I don't know, because you meet you meet quite you meet crazy people there and, and interesting people in them, and, and also just hanging about is good fun, you know. As you start travelling and, and and you start meeting more and more people, you realise that people are just coming up because they're interested. They're interested in the bike, they're interested in what you're up to, and 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 then you start talking to to people, and then slowly you start losing your inhibition of people and, and you start opening up and then you start thinking well no not everybody's out to get you and steal from you and actually in fact 99% of people are actually really nice and it was a lovely feeling eventually as you get into the journey to sort of realize that and that by the end of the journey you're just you're completely open to to, to anybody who's around you it was a great opportunity as well to to be able to to have some, actually have some time to yourself as well. And, and one of the great things about riding a motorbike around the world is that you have a lot of time to yourself because you're sitting on the bike for a very long time. We decided before we left that we wanted to work with, we wanted to work with a, a charity and, and one that looked after children. And um, so UNICEF seemed to be the, the obvious choice really. And I can't believe how much we've been touched by it and, and, and are now devoted to you know, to working with them for the rest of our days, really. It's the most important work in the world, you know, they're looking after children who aren't as fortunate as, as Charlie and, and, and my children are. What was your biggest falling out then on the trip? <laughs> we said before we left that we, you know, if there was anything that was bothering us, it was best to get it out in the open. So we did, and also by doing that, it's a great, you know, these are, these are things that we learn on the trip, but they're also really important lessons in life, I think, that, you know, if you do, confront somebody and it's not easy to do sometimes if someone's troubling you or something they've said bothers you or or something they're doing is making you unhappy and you, and you tell them there's a it gives them a chance to respond to that and if you let it sit in your own head they don't have a chance so it just gets darker and darker and darker and you get angrier and angrier and angrier and the poor bastard who you're angry with doesn't even have any idea every time it happened every time we said look and it was only about petty things or silly things or because we're tired or hungry and something was annoying us and, and it was very often to do with, with hunger and yeah, hunger fatigue really. Thing. But yeah, as soon right. as we, I said something to Charlie, he'd reply to me and then you go, yeah, yeah, yeah right, okay. And it's usually a 50-50 You know, the other person always had something to, to say, so you'd say, listen, that's really annoying me. And then he'd say, yeah, well, actually, <laughs> actually you know, at this particular moment you're annoying me as well. So, bang, that was it, done, done. And the it. fact that you're annoyed with me, it makes me annoyed with you. So. <laughs> We've known each other for nine years. We spent four months, nine to five, five days a week preparing the trip in this very room. And then we set out on the journey and we spent every waking minute with each other for 113 days. It would be really unusual if you didn't have some kind of narkiness with each other now and again, you know. And it's probably quite healthy that you do. We've come out of the back end of this and, and, and have really ended up, truthfully, with a hand on our hearts to come out better friends than, 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 than when we started this adventure and, and, and you know we know each other so well now that we can be sitting across a table at a dinner party or something like that and we can look up and catch an eye, catch each other's eye and, 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 and you know exactly what that person is thinking, <laughs> you know, it's almost, it's almost like a marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking bastard. And after this, let's yeah, joke it, we'll never see each other. Fucking plane again, <laughs>
Oh, it's I your tummy tummy. No, yeah, no I'm, I'm trying to get you. Five days' there, time. Yeah. Sorry, I can't do that thing. Anyway. Sorry, no, Charlie, you didn't come over. That's all right. I'll do it myself. Thank you very much. <laughs>